Hey guys, what's up today? We're looking at using Green's Theorem to evaluate a line integral around a positively oriented closed curve. So a positively oriented closed curve is one that goes counterclockwise, kind of like this curve over here. So what does Green's Theorem say? Green's Theorem says that the integral of a vector field, in this case a 2D vector field, p comma q, or if we write it out in this expanded notation, p dx plus q dy, equals double integral over the region enclosed by the closed curve c, partial q partial x minus partial p partial y. So what this says is that the line integral of a closed curve is really just a double integral over the region bounded by that closed curve, and what we integrate is partial q partial x minus partial p partial y. All right, so what we need to do is identify what are the pieces of our um, vector field. So here we have p, which is multiplied by dx, so that's y. So p of x, or sorry, p equals um, y, and q equals negative x. So then we need to take the partial derivative, so we want to convert this line integral into a double integral. So we need to um, calculate partial q partial x, which is negative 1. So partial q partial x is negative 1. And partial p partial y is 1. So then we have partial q partial x minus partial p partial y is negative 2 dA. So we want to integrate over some region r. Well, our region is not this crazy shape over here. The circle of radius 2 is where we want to integrate. So we're integrating over the circle of radius 2 centered at the origin. Okay. So this double integral becomes double integral negative 2 times the double integral over the circle dA. Now, you might notice that the double integral 1 dA represents the area of the circle. So if you wanted to, you could just take negative 2, multiply it by the area of the circle, and get the answer. But let's say we don't always have the ability to just take out the negative 2. Maybe we have a function, and we can't actually just take it out. So if that's the case, then we need to find the bounds of this double integral. So in this case, r is going from 0 to 2, and theta is going from 0 to 2 pi. So let's actually plug those bounds in to do our integral. So this is going to be negative 2, integral 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to 2, and then convert to polar coordinates, dA becomes r dr d theta which is equal to negative 2 times 2 pi, because I can do the theta integral without having to do r first, so I can split this up. Get 2 pi automatically times the integral from 0 to 2 r dr. So that's going to equal negative 4 pi times 1 half r squared from 0 to 2, and that is going to be negative 4 pi times um, 2 squared is 4, 4 over 2 is 2, so this is 2, and this answer is negative 8 pi. And that is the value of our line integral. So our line integral over the closed curve C, positively oriented, at y dx minus x dy is equal to negative 8 pi. All right, so now I've got an example that says use Green's theorem to evaluate the line integral over the curve C, um, and C is the positively oriented closed curve, which is the triangle with vertices 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1. All right, so same thing. Green's theorem says we can evaluate the line integral using a double integral. So we need to identify what is P and what is Q. So P here is x squared plus y squared, and q is x squared minus y squared. All right, so partial q partial x 
is 2x partial p partial y is 2y. So we're going to get partial q partial x minus partial p partial y equals, uh, that's going to be 2x minus 2y. So we're going to integrate that over this triangular region. So we got to look at this triangular region first. So plot these points. And I have the point 0, 0. I have the point 2, 1. So 2, 1 is right here. 2, 1. And I also have the point 0, 1. So that's right here. So this triangular region is going to be this way and then this way to make it positively oriented. We go counterclockwise around the region. So the double integral is actually going to happen over this region in here. So that's our region of integration now. What I need to do is find some bounds for this region of integration. So this region of integration is bounded below by this straight line. So I need to find that line equation. And it's bounded above by this line, y equals 1. So y equals 1 is up here. And what is this line? What is the slope of this line? Well, the rise is 1. The run is 2. So this is going to be the line y equals rise, which is 1, run, which is 2, x plus, in this case, 0. There's no intercept, or the 0 is the intercept, so 1 half x. So my lower bound for y is going to be this line, 1 half x. So y is going to be bounded by 1 half x on the bottom, and then bounded on top by 1. And then uh, x is going to be bounded from 0 to 2. So I'm setting this up as a type 1 region for my double integral. All right, so we've got our bounds. Um, we've got our integrand. Now I can convert to a double integral. All right, so we've got to do the integral from 0 to 2, integral from 1 half x to 1. So yeah, it's 2x minus 2y. Sorry. So let's go ahead and integrate with respect to y. That's going to give us integral from 0 to 2 for x. Integrate with respect to y. We get 2xy minus y squared, and that ranges from y equals 1 half x to y equals 1. And that's going to be left with integral for x. So now plug in the bounds for y. So integral from 0 to 2, and then y equals 1, that's going to be 2x minus 1, minus, and then plug in the lower bound for y, we get 2x times 1 half x minus, and then parentheses, 1 half x quantity squared dx. And we simplify that a little bit. That's going to be the integral 0 to 2, 2x minus 1 minus parentheses. Um, this 2x cancels with the 1 half, so that's going to just be x squared. And then minus 1 fourth x squared dx. And this is just going to reduce to the integral 0 to 2 of 2x minus 1 minus, let's see, in parentheses here we have 1 minus a quarter, that's going to be 3 quarters x squared, so minus 3 fourths x squared dx. And now I'll just integrate with respect to x, we get x squared minus x minus, let's see, divide by 3 we get 1 fourth x cubed from 0 to 2. Plug in those bounds. Um, plugging in 0, everything's going to go away, so all I have to do is plug in 2. So that's going to be 4 minus 2 minus 1 fourth times 8. So that's actually 4 minus 2 minus 2. Uh, this is actually just 0. So what a tricky answer for such a complicated looking integral. It actually turns out to be 0, so those are always fun. Anyway, just uh, some little nuances of Green's theorem. Sometimes you have it in a vector form. Sometimes you have it in this expanded um, PDX plus QDY form. Um, this is equivalent to writing um, 
f.dr. So you might see the notation f.dr. That's equivalent to this notation right here. So some little nuances of Green's theorem. Um, you might see it in different forms, but this is the most common. And that's how we do it.